Salut everyone! In this video, we'll be talking about the latest release from Canonical Ubuntu 2504. Yeah? Yeah, 2504. Like sometimes I get lost in those numbers. The name of this release is Plucky Puffin. Yes. Well, <laughs> uh, let's talk about the, the, the Plucky Puffin. Let's go. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. As you know, I'm not a super fan of Ubuntu. I didn't recommend it. And spoiler alert, I won't be recommending Ubuntu 2504 at the end of this video. For the reason I'm going to mention again and again, and I always mention since uh, the last like three releases, I had the opportunity to try. However, I have to say that Ubuntu is getting better and better. And this release was, again, in my opinion, one of the best. I, I won't still be recommending it. And also, like, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with this circuit. All right, so if you watch the live, you already know I did test Ubuntu and Kubuntu. So for people who are new to the party right now, Ubuntu is delivered with GNOME 48 and Kubuntu is delivered with KDE Plasma 6.3, if I remember correctly. As always, we're going to start with the Pro. And the first Pro I want to mention is that if you have over hard drive in your PC, well, guess what? You are going to be safe. Ubuntu and Kubuntu did not erase any of my over UEFI partition on the over hard drive in my PC. And this, my friend, is a win. Canonical did it. If I remember correctly, well, it was already the case with the previous release, but they didn't went back into their old mistake. And yes, you are safe if you install Ubuntu or Kubuntu in a multi hard drive slash SSD PC. Yes. So let's start with Ubuntu. And the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that Ubuntu installer is getting better and better each time I try uh, the latest Ubuntu release. This one is, in my opinion, like the, the more polished uh, version they ever had. It's not as massive as the latest release. However, I would like to say that it's more polished. You still have access to the third party codec page and the proprietary driver uh, option during the install. You just have to click those and you're going to have all the third party software installed on your machine. I'm thinking about all the Nvidia users out there. It's one click. You have nothing to do. Your graphic card is going to be working perfectly out of the box on Ubuntu. This is a big plus. The other like nice little touch they made is around like the selection of the hard drive and how you want to install Ubuntu on your machine. It's clearer, you have more options. I was a little bit, I have to say, like still a little bit confused on the wording because I have a lot of SSD on my PC. But still, at the end, there is a recap which tells you exactly which partition is going to be used for what. I'm thinking about the UEFI versus the root and slash data partition, etc. So you're going to be in a space where Everything is polished and really user friendly. And to that, I have to say like uh, just one thing, like a uh, good job Canonical. In my opinion, this is one of the best installers out there. As the second point in my opinion, which is even better in this release is the App Center. So the App Center right now, when you do a research in it and you have this little menu that drop down, you have the opportunity to choose between Snap and the Debian repo. And this is awesome. I'm, I'm going to tell you straight. Uh, I don't remember having this type of option in the previous release. Now you can decide whether you want to go with Snap or not. And it's pretty, like I would say, like clear from the get go. You don't have to activate any option or whatever. They give you the choice. So for this, another good job to Canonical team. And now, like, I, I, I think I'm going to have to make a video about that, but like, there is nothing new outside of that. Outside of the fact that all the different like package, uh, desktop environment, like everything that made Ubuntu Ubuntu has been upgraded for this release. 
So you're going to get like GNOME 48, all the latest features from GNOME 48, etc., uh, etc. Et but there is nothing like crazy new in terms of innovation or risk taking from them. So some of you are going to be like fine with it. Uh, on my hand, I like when maintainers like take big risk and sometimes the reward with it too, but there is nothing new right now. Now let's talk about Kubuntu. So for Kubuntu, it's also the same feeling I had. Like there is nothing crazy compared to the previous release. So I'm going to put the link of the previous like review I made of the latest like Ubuntu release for you to, to be aligned. But already there is nothing new uh, compared to it. Outside of, again, like an upgrade in terms of a version for KG Plasma. Uh, it looks like the installer is still Calamares. The experience itself is still the same. It's, 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 there is like, again, like nothing crazy. I still want to share with you the fact that the drivers are not installed during the installation. You're going to have to go through the KD settings and find this little section within the settings in which you can install all the proprietary drivers. It's fine, but I believe it's a little bit less polish than Ubuntu. Uh, it still does a job, to be fair, but, uh, you know, when are they going to just, like, put it in into the installation for all the NVIDIA users out there to have the best experience out of the box right away after the install? Uh, I don't know. I, maybe I'm asking too much, but, yeah, I think it would be great. So there is another point I need to mention there is the fact that you are in a position in which you could totally avoid snap. So there is an option during the installer where you can go minimal. And this minimalistic installation is going to avoid installing any of the snap package. And this is great. And we'll talk about it a little bit later, like how it can be like not great. But if you know that you can install Flatpak right after your first boot, and use Discover to install all your packages through Flatpak, then you're going to be in a position to totally avoid Snap. And this, my friend, is great. Because you could have like Kubuntu without any of the Snap stuff installed, just going through Flatpak. So I, I still need to share it with you guys. I know that some of my viewers are running Kubuntu, having a ton of fun with it. And the way they go through it is avoiding snap and going full flat pack. Now let's talk about the negative about this release. And I start to touch base with the main negative for Ubuntu is the fact that we have to deal with snap again. And snap is still not there when it comes to performance, when it comes to reactivity, maybe not for all the application out there, but I would say for the one which are critical for us, gamer and content creator, you're going to be, again, like under the umbrella of a force snap. So it happens during the stream, even while using Kubuntu, you're going to be sometime like just installing, I don't know, like Firefox, for example. And guess what? If you just install Firefox, it's going to install snap and go pull it from snap. If you want to install Firefox native, you're going to have to add the PPA of Firefox to install Firefox native. Otherwise, it's just going to pull Snap. I hate it. I want to be honest with you. Like, it, it gives me the Windows vibe where I can't really do what I want. I would love them to just avoid Snap once for all and let us enjoy Ubuntu and Kubuntu without it. Because the trick uh, on Kubuntu especially, like on, on Ubuntu, it's clear right off the bat, you have Firefox installed through Snap, you have like some packages, you, you can't escape it this way. On Kubuntu, they kind of like show you the carrot and they're like, hey, you can have this minimal install. Uh, yes, and not use Snap. So I looked right away and Snap was not on my system. I was like, this is awesome. And then I do a sudo apt install firefox because this is what i do i install it and i'm like damn this is awesome and guess what he installed snap in the background and installed firefox from snap and this my friend is just making me lose my mind i'm like why why so honestly for firefox it's not that bad and the issue become where you want to use for example steam 
And Steam, I made the test again. I was like, maybe Steam Snap is better now. And no, it's still not better. I was not able to launch Cyberpunk. I had worse performance while running the game through Snap. End of story. Uh, I'm gonna share some of the image there, but like it's a big, big decrease, like 30% in certain games in terms of FPS. You just don't want to use Snap for Steam and gaming. I would not also recommend using Snap for OBS and everything. You just have to avoid it. So yes, you can use Flatpak. It's fine to use Steam with Flatpak. I believe it's not the recommendation from Valve, but it still works. And you won't have this big like decrease in terms of FPS versus Snap. So yeah, that's Ads Ubuntu, guys. And now the other cons, and this is the elephant in the room. It did not happen to me when I tried it, but I believe this is a big problem. Uh, 11 days ago, we had this post from Ubuntu Meta. Major known issue with 25.04 install and upgrade. Known active issue. To all, we are aware of the EVD observe bug in the Ubuntu upgrade process. To that end, the release team disabled the upgrade route to 25.04 currently. Additionally, there is an issue with the ISO currently known on Ubuntu, Kubuntu Studio and Calamares based installer where things are not properly being installed or set up. There is no fix currently available, but the release team is aware. Boof! So here we have, like, please do not post about can't install or upgrade currently with regard to 2504 until the issue is resolved. So it has been 11 days and it looks like it's still not resolved. I didn't really follow uh, this story, you know, like I was, I was mentioning like one week ago how chaotic my Fedora installation was on my PC and I was about to praise the fact that Ubuntu actually like worked in terms of installation on my machine and it was the case and then I found this post. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, like, yes. It's polished, you know, it's it's better, but it, it's kind of broken at the same time. So, I, like, guys, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know what to say to you guys when it comes to Ubuntu. I didn't want to bash it again, and I, I, I don't think I need to bash it at this point. Like, this, this is where we are at with Ubuntu. So, yes, uh, honestly, like, I, I do believe, like, this issue, like, the last one I mentioned, is going to be resolved uh, in the coming days or weeks. I hope, <laughs> but like, you, you have to think about the, the main problem and why I can't recommend it. I just can't recommend it because of Snap. I think Snap to me is a plague. And I'm not talking about Snap from a, you know, like technical or philosophical approach because a lot of Linux users are against like th this type of like approach that Canonical is doing with, with Snap. It's more like a perspective from the end user, right? As I showed you like in the previous video and in this one, you install Steam with Snap, you have worse performance, right? Uh, and, and it just sucks. I, I can't recommend something like that. I just can't recommend it. You're just going to lose performance on the table for nothing. And the fact they kind of like sneak their way in into your system by just like forcing it when you just do a apt install a firefox for example t t to me it just it just sucks like it kind of like break my my linux vibe okay let's let's word it this way so again like as we see in france i'm not going to shoot on the ambulance <laughs> i think right now like they have a lot of problems to deal with especially with this release uh, but like yeah I, I can't recommend it uh, there is a lot of over destroy you can play with and uh, you're gonna avoid all, all this mess i really hope they're gonna get everything back together but it's kind of funny that from the like two big players uh, which are like canonical and fedora aka red hat uh, when they are pushing those release well guess what it's, it's just a mess so yeah it is what it is uh, you know what were my recommendations if you don't, uh, just go and, and check my, my video uh, on my channel and you will be, uh, I think, like getting better results by installing something else on your PC for gaming and content creation. So yeah, that's all for this one. Guys, thank you very much for watching. 
Don't forget to put a thumb up to this video, subscribe. I want to also thank all the members of La Crème de la Crème Club. You guys are the best. Thank for your continued support on both YouTube membership and Patreon. Thanks again and a lot. And see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.